Bryce is coming to tell us about some exciting things up and coming over the next couple of weeks. But um, from my heart, Cindy's heart to yours, my girls, thank you so much for um, your love, your support, your texts, your emails, your cards, the food. My goodness. And um, I'll tell you that I, um, I tested positive a couple of weeks ago for um, COVID-19. Thankfully, my symptoms were um, relatively mild. Had a couple of three or four days where I was like, wow. In fact, one, one day, Sydney and the girls said, Dad, we taking you to the hospital. And I said, I'm not going to the hospital, so I'll lay right here. And so anyway, we, um, a couple of days there was pretty rough. But I'm so thankful to the, to the Lord for your prayers, um, your support, supporting uh, what's, what's going on at the church, even, these, even in these unprecedented times. So thank you so much for um, all that you, you did there in this season. I am COVID-free, praise the Lord. Um, have a little bit of a cough, but that didn't happen to you good. So thank you again so much for all that you've done. So Pastor Bryce, I cleaned this microphone once, but... Uh, they they, they told me to use this one. Good, good, good. No offense or anything. <laughs> no, 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 you know, so... Uh, 
How good is it to see Pastor Carl and Pastor Cindy today? Awesome, right? Well, it's good to see you, First Assembly. Um, Just a few announcements. Hey, if you are um, a guest with us today or you've been coming uh, recently, you've been attending, we just want to welcome you, let you know how much of an honor it is that you would come and worship with us. And just a way that we can connect with you is if you would just fill out our Connect cards. They're out in the foyer on the kiosk. It's just a great way. Leave it in the the little box on the kiosk. Fill it out for us. That's our way of being able to connect with you. Sometimes in the way these these times that we're living, we don't get to see each other as much. And so we want to be able to reach out to you through the week and support you in whatever it is you're going through. And there are prayer cards out there as well. Also, we are having uh, for the youth this Wednesday, Thanksgiving with the fam, Thanksgiving with the youth group. Um, It's really exciting. We are going to be meeting in the fellowship hall at 7 p.m. And we're going to have our own youth kind of Thanksgiving get together. Now, fortunately for the turkey, we are not having a traditional meal. But the chicken is out of luck because we're having Chick-fil-A. So, uh, we, unfortunately for our poultry friend, chicken is, is off the table. So, we're going to be having Chick-fil-A 7 p.m. in the, uh, the fellowship hall on Wednesday, this Wednesday. And then also... We will be having open gym at 6.30 p.m. if any of the students would like to go and hang out in the gym before we have our Thanksgiving meal together. Also, we are having a Christmas toy drive, which is in partnership with the Common Ground Ministries. So um, this is a great way to serve, a great way to give. Please bring a new unwrapped toy, ages kindergarten through fifth grade. The deadline is the 9th of December. Um, And you can also donate to this outreach. Just mark your Tide Envelope toy drive or online as well. Once again, I know we're living in some crazy times, but this is a great way to give to the community. Sometimes even volunteering, we can't do what we would normally do. Um, So this is just a great way to put toys in the hands of those who don't have them. And so great way to do that. I know God always loves it when we help those in need. And then also uh, offering reminder, the boxes are also in the foyer on the kiosk. And as Dr. Langston says, you can always give online 24 seven. So um, just be aware of that. We love you church. We're excited for what God is doing in this season. Continue to worship with us in song. Yeah, in my way. 
to encourage you that you, you can place a request from him. We can stand on his word. We can call and activate his, his word in our lives. I don't know, perhaps there's an area where you have grown weak in. Perhaps there's an area that you feel discouraged or disappointed or despondent. Maybe some feelings and desires over a particular thing have, have changed. Maybe a career uh, that you have once loved, you, it, it, the feeling of, of, of loving what you do can sometimes wane when we're discouraged about it. Maybe, maybe you used to serve others and, and you really don't feel like you have the strength or the energy to, to do that. There's just not joy in, in serving. Sometimes it's, we feel like we're getting up just doing the same thing over and over and, and, and to get the same results. Maybe it's in your marriage where your marriage just just feel like and we just need a, a, a refreshing. Is it dying? Oh, there we go. Maybe you just feel like you need a refreshing. And I want to encourage you today. Maybe it's in the area of finances. Maybe it's physically today. But I was reminded this week, the Lord nudged me, that in those moments of our weakness, we can simply apply his word to that area of our lives. I don't know if you need healing today. You stand on his word no matter what the situation looks like. What we see with our natural eye doesn't govern or dictate. Our feet were not controlled or governed by how we feel. But we're, we stand on his infallible word. If you need healing today, if you need to be refreshed in the presence of the Lord, if there's some things that you need, allow the Holy Spirit to energize that area. As you apply the word to your life, the Bible says that we build ourselves up praying in the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of the Lord begins to energize that area as we apply His Word, as we pray over that area. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to energize you and empower you and awaken and restore and resurrect those areas in your life. My friend, God is absolutely faithful. And there is a flow that we can get into in prayer when we need the strength of the Lord. It's yours today. It's mine today. If we simply just tap in and apply his word. If you need prayer today, I, I want you just to stand right where you are. I'm not going to come forward today, but I would love the opportunity to pray for you. I, I don't know the situation in your life, but I know that his strength is perfect for you today. Come on, we'll wait just a moment and we'll pray this. Come on, Pastor David, would you guys sing that chorus one more time in the presence of the Lord and then we'll pray together. Thank you, Father.
those that are standing this morning and let's pray together father in jesus name we thank you for the power of prayer the power of agreement and lord we come into agreement with our precious friends and brothers and sisters that are standing together today lord you know you see you understand and you care today and Lord, we apply the promises of God to whatever need is represented here today. Lord, if they need healing, let the healing virtue of Jesus Christ flow in the sick bodies today. Lord, if there's discouragement and depression, Lord, despondency and torment, we command that to lift today and let the joy of the Lord that is our strength be restored Father, for marriages and situations and, and turmoil at homes, Father, we pray today that, Lord, you bring resolve, you bring peace today in Jesus' name. Lord, we look to you, we apply your word to our need, and we pray, Lord, that you would intervene in every situation. Lord, we look to you, and we trust you. Thank you, Lord, that we're raised in your power. And we become strong today in Jesus' name. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. And because of that, you're going to see a victory. Come on, guys, sing that.
Lord, I ask that you would allow your word to come alive on the inside of us. Lord, speak in this house. Move and motivate us. Challenge. Change us. Repair. Lord, thank you that you are enough for whatever that we face today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. Singers, musicians, once again, thank you so very much. We love and appreciate you very much. Uh, first, I just want to say this is not in my character to come up here and talk, but God just about shoved me out of my seat and said, you better go tell them. So last week, um, we were prayed for. I mean, we were, we were praying and Mark felt a touch, and he, we came up and we talked and told y'all he had um, open heart surgery a year and a half ago. And I don't know if any of y'all know what ejection fraction is, but it's how hard your heart pumps the blood through your body. And at, before his surgery, he was at 20, 25. It's supposed to be 50 to 70. And we were pretty much told you know, with the surgery, with the medication, he might get 40, get in the 40 range. Well, I didn't even think about, you know, the prayer last week and our test that we already had scheduled for Tuesday. And he goes in every six months for a sonogram on his heart. And they called us on Thursday. He is at 60 to 65 percent. That's normal. No one ever thought he would be in a normal heart rate. So I just have to give God the glory, and I just have to stand to share it with him. Thank you so much. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. You're gonna see a victory. We're gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. To your Lord. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Appreciate that very, very much. As, as, uh, as you know, I, I have a real heart passion for the nation of Honduras. And um, some of you have uh, been there with me, know the area very well, know the airport that we flew into, the camp that we went to in the rainforest. And the missionary there that we support, um, Brother Randy Herring, um, we've we've been in touch with him um, over the last really the last couple of weeks. And as as you know, Hurricane Etta hit that area. And and what's what's challenging about Honduras is 
uh, is the mountains and, and all of the things. Um, they have lots of mudslides. Their, their, their homes, as you can imagine, aren't built with um, the greatest of, of, of strength or they're built on, you know, it's, it's really lean-tos and huts on side of these uh, mountains, beautiful area. But lots of rain can, can create lots of issues. And so once again, Honduras was hit with Hurricane Etta. Um, unfortunately, another one is headed that direction. Same path as Etta, uh, category three. Um, so much of the problem is, is the rain uh, that they experienced there. We're, I'm just showing you some, some photos that Randy uh, has sent to us. A lot of medical supplies needed. Um, this is the airport that we fly into in San Pedro Sula. Um, it'll be about, they said, four to six months before it's operational again. You can imagine the challenges of, of them getting food to the people in the area. Um, we have a couple of videos, but we'll show you those a little bit later on. Lots of food lines and, and medical supplies, and, and the people are just in such desperate needs. And uh, I know what, what, what Lake Charles was like when Hurricane Laura hit there. Um, it, it's, it's different. Honduras doesn't really have governmental assistance at all. Um, they, they rely on um, so much outside uh, resources. So I'm going to ask you to help me on December the 6th. We are going to receive a hurricane relief offering for the nation of Honduras. We'll, we'll put it all together, run it through the church, get it to, um, get it to Randy. Their, their primary mission right now is to feed, um, is to feed the people. Like for instance, a, a normally um, when we take teams there and we distribute food up in the mountains, we, um, a chicken would cost $4. Well, because of the mudslides and, and all of the things there, they um, uh, they have to ship everything from Tegucigalpa. And so a chicken that would normally cost $4 costs $7. And so the expenses are great, and they're really trying to take care and feed um, the people in that, in that area. Just so much devastation. And so I just wanted to present the need to you. And uh, I know some of us like a couple of weeks we can... We can get some, some money together, but uh, everything that we give in that December the 6th offering, uh, really a Thanksgiving offering for the blessings and the, uh, of the Lord on our lives, but for, for them, we'll put it all together, get it to Randy and, and help to feed them. I wanted to present the need to you. Some of you watching by um, at home, watching online today can help us with that. Again, that will be December the 6th. We'll take a special offering for the nation of Honduras. We're going to go ahead and, and send some money uh, in front of that. We'll do that this week so that they can go ahead and start to, to get some things accomplished there. And uh, there are people in the city of San Pedro Sula that are still living on their roof. Um, and it's been a week. And, and uh, pictures are, are just horrific. The videos, little kids sitting on their, their roof just... Still, the water hasn't receded and another hurricane is on its way. So, Father, we ask you today, Lord, for, for Randy and his team. Lord, some of them are struggling, dealing with their own personal tragedies. And yet, Lord, they're serving the people, Lord, for, for the villages around the camp. And, Lord, we just ask you to intervene. Lord, we know that we can see a victory in the nation of Honduras Lord, would you cause this hurricane to dissipate in Jesus' name? Lord, that's not too difficult for you. Lord, let it dissipate in, in, out, out in, the, in the ocean, Lord, from where it comes. Father, we ask we send the word of the Lord to Randy and to his team. Lord, let the strength of the Lord be theirs today. And Father, we pray that you bless them or give them creative ideas. Lord, to reach and to, and to feed people. And Lord, help them in Jesus' name. We send the word and we'll send the resources as we join together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. I do want to um, draw your attention to the word of the Lord for a few moments today. As we continue, and, and I'll finish this series today on the subject of encounter. In, in the context 
of what he has done in the lives of the men and women that have come or gone before us. So the God who encountered Moses, the God who worked through Elijah, the God who directed the Apostle Paul and some of the other apostles and, and, and the disciples, the God that guided each man and woman through the scripture and through the word of God is the same God that desires to encounter you and me on this Sunday morning. Having an, an encounter with God is, is kind of what we have focused on. And most of the men and the women of Scripture who had an encounter with God were immediately and forever changed. And when we are in the presence of God, God brings about real change. He brings about radical change, if you would. And so our primary purpose in coming to the house of the Lord is really not to, to see our, our friends as often as often as that is. Our primary purpose when we come to the house of the Lord ought to be to have an encounter with Him. See, because as most of you have probably experienced, one encounter with God changes everything. One encounter with God can set your life on a particular course. One encounter with God, it, it, it marks you. I want you to think about an encounter that you've had with God. Because it, it, it marks you and it changes you. It, 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 it really makes you. And it leaves you hungry for more of Him and more of who He is. Any time that we have an, an encounter with God, and I'm so glad that, that, uh, <coughs> that Mark shared his story today. Any time we have an encounter with God, it brings change. Most of us, we don't really like change. Because change, it, it, it can be scary. It can bring anxiety. Change can bring stress. And when things change, we must have faith because we don't have the facts to stand on anymore. When things change, it, it, it becomes a little bit, uh, we can become apprehensive to change because all of the facts, everything that we seem to have known before changes and we must believe because we can't see. And so now I need faith once I have an encounter with God. I need faith because I have to move in an area that I really I, I really can't see. I, I don't know if you have ever had singing lessons. But but if you've ever had one singing lesson, you, you've heard your teacher or your coach, your instructor your instructor, they, they, they talk about, they use some weird terminology. They, they, they talk about breathing from your stomach. They talk about using your chest voice. They talk about falsetta. And, and they talk about directing the sound to come out of the top of your hair. It, it, it's, it's weird stuff, but vocal coaches and, and, and instructors, they use unusual language because the voice box is internal. And, and we use our, our voices, we use the box, but we don't see it in action. We, 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 we can only feel it. And, and so a singing teacher or coach, to get their student to understand, they have to use metaphors, and, 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 and they, they use language that, that's a little bit odd. And to get the, the student to sing healthily and, and to sing with proper techniques. And, and many times, encountering God is similar to singing lessons because when we encounter God, it's often an internal experience. See, there are, there are external things that can happen. We're going to talk for a few moments about those in just a little bit. But it is an internal experience and, and, and Every person, every one of us is different in how that God relates to us and how that we relate to him. And, and so God relates to us in different ways because we are made so different. And so 
encounters with God can be challenging to describe. They can be challenging to understand or to even talk about. Encountering God, however, is incredibly important in the life excuse me, in the life of a Christian. And so there are some realities that I want to I mention to you. First of all, we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, a familiar passage of scripture, and it's, it, this is what the Bible says in verse number 23, reading out from the King James Version, and we have it there on the screen for you. And the very God of peace sanctify you both, and I pray God, your whole spirit and your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in that particular passage, Paul describes to us that we are tripartite. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live, the spirit and the soul live in a body. So when you have an encounter with God, God many times can touch all three of those areas. Our spirit instantly changes when we have an encounter with God. The moment, if, if the moment you uh, come to Christ, your spirit is born again. It's made new. It, it, it's, we become sane. Now, the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion, that takes a little bit. It's your mind is renewed. When we encounter God, we have our spirit is instantly changed. But the, our mind is something that we have to be renewed. We grow through the things of God by, by becoming more and more like Christ. As we know, none of us are perfect, but we, our mind is renewed out of the word of the Lord. Now, our, our bodies, oftentimes, an encounter with God is manifested physically through healing, as we heard today. Now, God can certainly thank God for medical professionals. He uses them every single day. And, and obviously, they had a hand in, in Martin. But really, the encounter of God was made manifest in his body through healing. So oftentimes, God, God encounters us, and our bodies, uh, our bodies are healed as a result of the encounter with God through his word, whether somebody lays hands on you, whether God gives us some medical professionals, but the reality is, is it is because of an encounter with God we are healed. Now, our will, whoo, those may not be as hard as mine is, but again, sometimes those wills, our wills, we have to bring in submission. We have to say, you know what? Paul Richard, you are not in control. And in my will, I got to line up with the will of God and the word of God. And so our wills, oftentimes, we get it's a matter of saying, boy, sit down. Right? Y'all may not have that problem, but that's me. But let me just give you a couple of, of things, and then I have a couple of people that I've asked to share today for just a few moments about their encounter with God. And Dr. Dan's going to help me with that. <coughs> Pardon me. But let me share just. Let me share just a couple of things with you today. Sorry, you got to bear with this deal with this coffin with me. I apologize. But the first thing I want you to understand is that when we have an encounter with God, that it's really the encounter is about a person. That's the first thing. It's the first and the most important thing when we understand uh, encountering God. Because an encounter with God is not just a, a special feeling. It's not about experiencing a, a force or a power. No, encountering God is really an encounter with a person, the person of the Holy Spirit. He, he's not just a, a force that we use for our particular use. No, he is a person, and the Holy Spirit has feelings and emotion, and he desires a relationship with you and me. He is a person. And so when he encounters us, it's because he wants to build a relationship with us, and he wants to transform us to become more and more like Jesus. That's the first thing I want to, to mention to you. The second thing is, an encounter with God, it looks different, different for everybody. Every person is made so uniquely, so it makes sense that God meets us and he meets 
every one of us in, in different ways. Sometimes God, the encounter of God is physical and it's manifested in a healing. Other times, if you have an encounter with God, is it, can it be emotional? You bet. And sometimes you, you're overwhelmed with joy. Sometimes you are just, just so emotional because the God of the universe has encountered me. He has stepped into my life to intervene. He has stepped into a, a, a church service or a meeting. And, and, and so we can become emotional. And oftentimes, it is prophetic. When we encounter God, there is a prophetic, a, a prophetic word that, that, may, that may come forth. Now, let me tell you, mention to you about the prophetic, because oftentimes, we, and, and in our Pentecostal charismatic circles, man, I, 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 we, we want to go, we chase the word, right? I mean, I, I remember doing that. We want to go here, maybe they'll give me a word. Before. Here's, here's the thing about the prophetic. Number one is it always should line up with his word. And most of the time, most of the time, it should be a confirmation to what God has already spoken to you. So if somebody gives you, in an encounter with God, if somebody gives you a prophetic word, those are the two things. And you can judge a word. It's all right, right here. You can judge a word. It's got to line up with his word. And it should be something that should be a confirmation to you. And so I won't stay, uh, I won't stay there too long. Those are some things about the encounter of God. The other thing is that an encounter with God, it, 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 it feels like something. And sometimes we shy away, even in our Pentecostal circles, we shy away from the idea that we can experience God or feel something when God meets us because we might have seen uh, abuse, so to speak, with, with, with some of that. But, but and so often we just sort of shy away from it or, or we're afraid of the idea that I may become over-emotional and I don't want to be swept up into something that, that I, I, I can't control. But when we encounter God, you may feel His peace. Oftentimes you just want to sit and not have anything said. Oftentimes in a service, we just, we just, nothing needs to be said. The presence of the Lord sweeps in with his peace, and, and you just feel like, man, for anybody to say anything would just be out of, out of place, out of, out, of, out of line. Oftentimes you feel his joy. Oftentimes you feel the love of God or the strength of God. And, and those are all good things. And it is certainly biblical to experience God in a way where we get, we can feel. We, we feel him. He, he, he is an emotional God. He has emotions. And so when he encounters us, we, we, we feel things. The next thing that I want to share with you is when we encounter God, or an encounter with God, it, it can happen anywhere. It's not just in the four walls of a church. God's not limited to encounters uh, just in a church meeting or a building. You can encounter God wherever God decides to meet with you. You can encounter God taking kids to school. You can encounter God driving to the office. You can encounter God. Oftentimes God speaks to us through dreams. I believe in that. If, now you have to, dreams are, are, are interesting because sometimes we've had too many refried beans the night before and, and we think well we got this dream from God and it's really not so but God can speak to us through dreams so he can encounter us that way God can speak to us anywhere if you're out for a walk walk in the neighborhood and so after the resurrection the Bible tells the accounts of Jesus and, and he's meeting the the disciples unannounced and he's meeting them unexpectedly and God still does that. The last thing I want to share with you before Dr. Dan comes is any time that we encounter God, no matter the encounter, if it's, if it's a feeling, no matter if it's an encounter uh, uh, where, we, where God touches us physically, what you can, when all of that lives, the thing that you have to understand is described in Galatians chapter 5. 
and it's the fruit of the Spirit. Anytime we have an encounter with God, it's going to be, it, he, he develops the fruit of the Spirit in us. The fruit stays. The feeling might lift, but the fruit stay. And the fruit is bound to show when we truly have an encounter with God. You might have a physical healing through the encounter. You might feel something emotionally through the, the encounter. God could use a prophetic voice in the encounter. And all those things are true and wonderful and they're still relevant. But the reality is when that lifts, the fruit of the Spirit will remain in my life. I'll have love. I'll have joy. I'll have peace. Those fruits should be developed in part of the encounter with God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? All right, all right. See, the Holy Spirit's a person. And He wants to build this two-way relationship with us. God wants to encounter. And when we consider the encounter with God, it's important and I want you to remember that God meets us where we are. He meets us where we are. And when we surrender our will to his, and when we say, God, encounter us. Lord, help come closer. Let your presence dwell here. Let your presence dwell here. It's a surrender of our will. To the things of God. Again, I've asked Dr. Dan to help me. And um, uh, you heard, we heard from a couple weeks ago, we heard from Miss Shannon Adams how that she had an encounter with God and God, it was his, it was the peace of God. And so I've asked uh, Peyton Robertson, who's a student over in Sagu in his first year, an incredible young man. He's going to share just a couple of minutes and then Miss Diane Downs is going to share a little bit. And Dr. Dan's going to close us, close us out today. So, I have you have your mask. Yes. And I've got Lysol wipes so you can wipe the mics after they use. Awesome. All right. That's okay, good. sir. Thank you so much for helping me. All right. So Peyton's coming. Here you go, Peyton. I'll help. Thank you. Do I just go ahead? Okay. Cool. <laughs> So I'm a freshman at Sagu. I love it here so far. I'm from Montana, so this is my like, first time in Texas, and I love every one of you already. So <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys are pretty similar to Montanans, so I love it. But um, uh, I'll have to say I had a really awesome encounter this year on God just defining my call and also my identity, and it was a really cool encounter. Uh, so there were a bunch of us in our dorm. We were about to go watch a movie. I think we were going to watch Marley and Me because we wanted to cry or something. I don't know. It was, it was funny. But um, there was like seven of us ready to watch a movie. And I went to go grab something from my room. And when I grabbed it from my room, I think it was my water bottle, I was running back. And I saw in the lounge a couple of guys in there with like some communion stuff. And I went in there and I'm like, hey, guys, what are you doing? And he's like, I just feel like God wants us to do communion as like a dorm. And I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. So I told everyone in the room that we, like the people that I was going to watch the movie with that, hey, there's a guy that wants to do communion and I think we should go do it. So we all went into that room and we got a ton of other guys from the dorm, from the basement and the uh, first floor. We all came up to the second floor and started having communion with each other. So this guy let it out and it was awesome. He was reading scripture. We read the uh, Passion of Christ in the Bible and we started to, um, you know, pass the elements around and we did communion. And it was so cool because I have a passion for counseling and um, men's ministry and also like pastoral leadership. So I just have a heart for people. And in that moment, after we did communion, for some reason, God just like put it heavy on my spirit. Like, I want you to pray over every single guy in this room. So there was like 20 guys in there, like 20, 25 guys in there. And it was pretty awesome. So I, I got up and I was like, hey, guys, I feel like we just need to pray for each and every one of us right now. Like we should all just like intercede in prayer for each and every one of us. And like when we started praying for every person, we all just like it was just a, I don't even know how to ex like explain it. It was just like a ton of voices just praying to God. It was such a cool thing. And in that moment, when we started praying over the first person, just hearing every one of those men's voices 
and just I could feel the Holy Spirit just come up inside of me and he's like this is what I want you to do I want you to lead men's ministry and be an example to other men so throughout that night I was able to pray for all of those guys we stayed up till three in the morning we were not expecting that we were thinking watching a movie crash and wake up the next morning but no, that's not what God had in store that night. And it was pretty awesome because there were prophetic words just being thrown out everywhere by a couple of these guys that are like, they work in the prophetic and God just used them so much. And one prophetic word that I got, um, knowing that that was God talking to me, um, he said, I want you, uh, or he came up to me and he's like, Peyton, I feel like God's wanting you to be a father to fathers or an example to fathers. And I want you to, our, uh, and he, he clarified, he was like, oh, I think you're supposed to lead men as in being an example as a husband, a, uh, a, a father, and a leader. So, and that really defined what God like, was doing in me that night. And it was really awesome. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Diane. Thank you so much. Diane's coming now. And isn't it good to know that God speaks to all of us the way we need to hear? Amen. Yeah. 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 Good morning. God bless you. When I was asked if I had had an encounter I could share, I felt like I was to share something regarding Nino's, a restaurant that God blessed us with for 27 years. However, due to the tragic death of my sister Linda last week, two weeks ago, and getting to see a brother uh, that I hadn't seen in years and a, a grandson that's in the military that we hadn't seen in years, I felt led to change my encounter to a very personal one that is very deep rooted in my youth. And because Philip always says, never hand a woman a mic, I've uh, written it down so I can stay, keep it condensed. I had an amazing big brother named after my father, Nick, but we called him Junior. I can hear my, my parents still saying to my brother, Junior, Diana's your little sister. You take care of her. And with all his heart, he did. We had a special bond that most brothers and sisters do not have. And to be honest, he was more like my father, my mother, uh, my best friend all rolled in one big brother. It wasn't revealed till years later that deep-rooted parental issues caused me to suffer from rejection, fear, insecurities, and abandonment since a child. But Junior was always there to make me feel safe, important, and protected. So obviously, I saw him as my sole protector and defender. If what I battled was not enough, the week that Junior graduated from high school, he got married and left home. I felt like he abandoned me. You know the saying, out of the frying pan to the fire? Well, before that year was out, I had eloped with my first husband. Philip wanted to make sure that I expressed that. And uh, so to add to everything else, I had a life of physical abuse. Uh, the following year, in April of 1969, came the ultimate abandonment. Junior was killed in Vietnam. It is believed that abandonment is the strongest root of fear, even stronger than rejection because it goes deeper than rejection. From then on, my family had to critique all my movies to make sure that there were no war scenes. On Junior's birthday and the day he died, I'd be the cemetery. I couldn't bear to hear the sound that, that a hand makes when it moves up and down an acoustic guitar. I couldn't hear old rhythm and blues songs because that's what he played or be asked about him. All these things brought me to tears. And believe it or not, I developed a severe fear to speak. I studied for many, many years. It wasn't until 15 years later, 1985, while visiting a local church that a young man told me, a young minister told me, you have an unhealthy soul time with your, with your brother that was hindering me. I had read about the soul tie between Jonathan and David and in the Bible, and it wasn't a hindrance. So how could the soul tie I had with my brother be bad? What Satan intends for bad, God intends for good. Bad situations in our life made us realize we needed God in our lives. In 1991, we made that born-again decision. God sent us godly people for Bible studies in our home, services in the restaurant, mission trips, but most important, healing and deliverance from so much bondage and oppression. 
Even then, in 1993, even though I was learning the Word of God, we were using the Word of God, it was after our Thanksgiving dinner that my family sat me down and said, Diana, you need healing. Suffering Junior's death is not helping you. It's been 23 years. I agreed I needed healing in this area, but I didn't know how. On December 19th of that same year, my, it was my son's birthday, and my mother had invited him to her house to make him breakfast and some homemade tortillas, which he insists on. When my son and daughter-in-law got back to the restaurant, she questioned me in regards, my, my daughter-in-law questioned me in regards to an accusation that left me shocked and hurt. I called a family member who knew the truth that would defend me, but he, he said he couldn't. I felt alone. All day I fought the tears, and even though Philip tried to console me, I was too hurt. I closed Nino's that night and got home around 12 o'clock. Although Philip told me, come to bed, I went straight to my closet and fell on a pile of shoes. I prayed and I cried, and I don't know whether it was my mind's eye or that I actually saw this, but I, I felt like there was these, these four little cloudy little puffs all around my head, dancing around my head as I, as I laid over on that floor. And on them was a name, hurt, bitterness, rejection, and alone. And I pleaded with them, don't settle back in me again. I cried for so long that finally Philip yelled out, Diana, stop crying, you're gonna make yourself sick. As I moved to settle myself on another pile of shoes, I said, Junior, I need you here to protect me and defend me. When I heard a voice I knew it was God, he said, He's not your protector. He is not your defender. He said, I'm your protector. I'm your defender. I said, I'm sorry, God, you're right. You are my protector. You are my defender. Junior, I release you. It was at that moment I kind of went, I kind of, and it kind of shocked me that the tears just stopped like that. And I went, huh. Got up, washed my face, I went to bed. I've been, I've been in there crying for like two hours. It wasn't until about two weeks later preparing for a Christmas dinner with my family that Philip said, Diane, how are you doing about that thing you were going through some weeks back? I said, huh, I forgot all about it. Also, that year, April, a few months later, with the anniversary of my brother's death, no tears. I was okay. But the most amazing thing was that that year, also, the movie Forrest Gump was released. And in it was a scene that we didn't know about. It was the Vietnam scene. And I didn't realize that the way that my brother had died was just a lot like this was the scene in this movie. And I was okay. I didn't run out of the movies. I got to see it and I realized that God truly is my everything. And I know that my encounter was God, that he just, he had healed me, healed my pain, and delivered me. Lord. Aren't you glad he's with us? Amen. Let's stand. And Pastor Carl, thank you so much for that great message. We, we want to pray that God will give us an encounter. And we're available for those encounters. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word that was preached today. Thank you for your presence that's with us. Thank you for these testimonies of what you've already done. Now we stand in to say we're available. We're ready. Use us for your great purposes, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Here it is, man.